bloodstream. But unfortunately, our body wants to take the easy way out. And instead, instead of converting the body fat into glucose to burn his energy, it slows down your metabolism. And this is where, as we age, our hormones really take effect because it slows down our metabolism and now we gain body fat. We're trying to get rid of body fat. Why are we gaining it? When we gain body fat, now our adrenal issues and our adrenal dysfunction or dysregulation happens as well. So with, with all that being said, you're gonna have, so just some, um, some examples of low thyroid or hypothyroid, just so I don't miss any, I'm gonna read them out to you. So constipation and poor digestion, low body temperature, cold hands and cold feet, uh, depression, fatigue, forgetfulness, this is a big one. Uh, bloating and water retention, loss of drive and ambition, uh, achy, or achy muscles and joints, and weight gain. So that's hypothyroidism, that's slow thyroid. How many of those do you have? Two or three? Two or three? Here's some fish oil, help that out. <laughs> Two or three? So I gotta be guzzling this, he's right. It's yes, exactly. Fish oil is so good. I, swear I get the mantra every day. Good, good. I, I, like, I actually like chucking it now. It's not bad. Mango's good. Mango, lemon, mango. So, are you guys familiar? We're gonna talk about how. Are you familiar with um, the ratio of omega threes and omega six in our diet right now, and how we're way out of whack? So this really affects our thyroid as well. Again, causing slow metabolism, causing inflammation, going through that same system again. So your polyunsaturated fatty acids from omega sixes, which are always found in processed foods and refined foods, and unfortunately restaurant foods because it's cheaper than getting good quality, high quality olive oil, unless you're going to a specific restaurant, but in general. So this ratio is so out of whack right now. It should be a one to one to a one to three ratio, and that's usually pretty healthy. But right now, a side American diet, we're like at one to 20, one to 25. And that's why we have so much inflammation, so much clogged digestion, and in turn, so much disease. Um, we talked about soy a little bit with phytates. I didn't talk about the trypsin inhibitors. Trypsin inhibitor is basically attached to your protein and allow, and basically don't allow your protein to absorb properly. But that's only with unfermented and unorganic soy. When you have fermented soy and organic soy like tempeh, uh, wheat-free tamari, natto, I'm missing one. Um, oh, what is it? I have it written down? No, I don't. Tempeh, natto, wheat-free tamari, miso. Ah, there we go, miso. When you have those that are organic and, and fermented, all these phytates and things like that pretty much get thrown out the window. There'll be a few people that are still susceptible to that, but on average, soy is not a bad food for you, providing you're only having it a couple times a week. So you don't want to live on it and have it like two times a day. Soy in general is goitrogenic, so it slows down your thyroid. It, just like the brassica vegetables being raw, so those are your broccolis, your cauliflowers, uh, your Brussels sprouts, your cabbage. When they're raw and you have thyroid issues, those may be, potentially be an issue. Um, if you cook them or slightly steam them, you might be okay there. So you have to kind of play around with what works for you, but just so you know, if you have thyroid issues, stay kind of far away from the raw vegetables, those raw broccolis and cauliflowers and cabbages. If you want to try steaming them, that's okay. Uh, and stay away from your unorganic soy products, okay? Just so you, until you get your, your almost back up. But soy in general is pretty healthy as long as you have it a few times a week because it's high in protein and things like that. But if you don't eat it, you don't need it. So.